Hello boys and girls, welcome back to another lesson in Algebra 1. This is Mr. Bean. Today's lesson, we are going to be solving quadratic equations just by taking square roots. So, let's remind ourselves, let's remember back with, uh, with Mr. Sullivan. He taught us quite a bit about graphing quadratics and what quadratics are. So what in the world is a quadratic equation? That's when you have something like this, where you have some number x squared plus another number times x plus some other number. And then, of course, if it was an equation, it would equal something. So actually, this is just a quadratic expression. Maybe, in fact, you could even say expression right there instead of equation. OK, scratch that. Let's leave it equation because I'm going to give examples of equations. So this here is an expression. The reason it's quadratic is because you have a variable x being raised to the second power. That is how you know if it's a quadratic. If the largest exponent is a 2, the largest exponent of the variable, then it is a quadratic. So this is the linear term. It's OK. We can have a linear term. This is the constant term. That's OK. But if as long as the largest power is a 2 for the variable x, that's considered an exponent. So let me show you here some quick examples. This is a e quadratic equation because the largest exponent is a 2 of the variables. So it's quadratic. Another example. This one, x squared equals 6. This is a quadratic equation because, again, the largest, vari the largest exponent of a variable is a 2. Notice we don't have any bx here. You just have the quadratic term and the constant. No problem. It's still a quadratic equation. In fact, they're even easier to solve. This is what we're going to focus on today, actually, is solving ones like that. So what's the graph called of a quadratic function? Remember from our unit 10, parabola, although some students pronounce it parabola, which I think is hilarious. So how many zeros does a quadratic have? If you remember that, uh, what does a parabola do? Remember, it looks like this. So how many times could it cross the x-axis? How many zeros? There could be two. So maybe it does something like this, where it comes down and crosses it like that. One, two. Maybe it only has one because the vertex itself is just barely touching on the x-axis. So the vertex is touching at one place, so there's one zero. Or maybe the parabola doesn't touch the x-axis at all. It opens up or down, but it never comes down here and crosses the x-axis. So the number of zeros that a quadratic has, or a parabola, is the number of answers we can have when solving a quadratic equation. Let me repeat that one more time. The number of zeros a quadratic has is exactly the same number of, of solutions the quadratic equation has. So when we solve this right here, it's either going to have two answers, because the parabola would cross twice, or one answer, because it touches just once, or maybe there's no solution because it never crosses the x-axis. So with that, let's jump into actually solving some equations. Number one is really, really simple. We're just going to solve this x squared here. We're going to get rid of the 2 by taking the square root of each side. So when you introduce a square root, you must say plus or minus. Again, when you introduce a square root, you've got to say plus or minus. So we're saying plus or minus the square root of 16. Therefore, the answer is plus or minus 4. Now, what does this mean, plus or minus 4? It means x equals 4 or x equals negative 4. What's nice about writing it like this, the plus or minus, for all of us lazy people, oh, it's so nice. Instead of writing out this whole thing two separate times, 4 or negative 4, we can just say this, plus or minus. As long as you understand that's two numbers. It is not one number. It's two different answers. So in that case, it would be this type of a parabola where it has two zeros if we were to try and set it equal to zero and graph it. OK, number two. This one's a little different because you have a coefficient in front of our x squared. Notice on this one, there was nothing in front of x squared, so we just took the square root. So in order to do this, what we have to do first is get this thing by itself. You've got whatever's being squared needs to be isolated. So I'm going to divide both sides by 2 and get x squared equals 50. Now I can take the square root of both sides and get x equals plus or minus 50. And now to simplify this thing, this goes back to our uh, last lesson, simplifying radicals. And remember, 50 is the same thing as 25 times 2 plus or minus. I guess I should show my, all my steps here. So x equals plus or minus 5 radical 2. That is the answer. And again, that is two different answers, a positive 5 radical 2 and a negative 5 radical 2. 
All right, for our next one, now we've got even more stuff going on here. So you've still got an x squared that we're trying to isolate. Let's use red. I like it better. So we're trying to get this x squared by itself first. So you solve this just like you would normally solve an equation, and that is subtract the 5 and then divide by 2. So minus 5, minus 5, and then we get 2x squared, because those things cancel, equals 72. Now divide by 2, and we get x squared equals 36. Oh, awesome. 36 is a perfect square. So when I take the square root of both sides, I'm going to get plus or minus, because remember, as soon as you introduce a square root here, I got to go plus or minus. Plus or minus the square root of 36, well, that's just plus or minus 6. There's my answer. Plus or minus 6. A positive 6 and a negative 6. Okay, number four, really similar to the last one we did, but you're going to see here something weird is going to happen. So I'm going to isolate this x squared, and then I'll take the square root. So my first step is to subtract 5, and then I'll get 2x squared equals 0. 0? What do you do there? You just keep going. You divide both sides by 2, divide by 2, x squared equals 0 divided by 2 is 0. And now when I take the square root of both sides, I just get 0. Notice I did not put a plus or minus. Why not? Because when you have 0 and you take the square root of 0, it's 0. 0 doesn't have a sign. It's not positive or negative. It's in between the positive and negatives. So you don't put any. There's not two answers for this one. So this is a good example of one that would have been like this, one solution, because it would have come down here, touch it, and then come back up if we were to try and graph, set this equal to 0 and graph it. Okay, number five. I'm going to try and write small here because I'm going to show you quite a bit of stuff that we're going to do. So, uh, again, we're trying to get this x squared by itself. All right, so write small, add 20, add 20, and we get 3x squared equals uh, 120. Divide both sides by 3, and we get x squared equals 40 when we divide by 3. Okay. So now our answer then is going to be x equals plus or minus the square root of 40. I'm going to break 40 up. This is from our last lesson. Remember this? 4 times 10. And then we can have x equals plus or minus 2 radical 10. So this is the answer. But the reason I wanted you to save some room, there's two answers here, is because I want to show you with a calculator that we actually can just plug this in a calculator and let us get the decimal approximation. So I'm going to say, I could say 2 square roots, the square root sign of 10, and hit Enter, which is 6.32. Or I could have just said the square root of 40 if I was trying to get the decimal answer. So let me drag this over here to the screen so we can, I can have that on here to refer to. So if the instructions say, to go ahead and give a decimal answer, then you would say that x is equal to plus or minus 6.32. And we can just stop there. We're just going to go two decimal places. So that would also be the answer. OK, this is important. Are you listening? The, the, if you are not listening and you're just watching without the sound, you're missing this. This right here is exact. Exact answer. OK, that's important. When it has the radical, that's an exact answer. This answer here is rounded. When you do the decimals, in fact, I need to fix that. That should not be equals. I should put a tiny little, let me erase part of that there. Ooh, almost all of it. Good. There, it should be an approximation sign. So it, x is approximately plus or minus 6.32. Because it's a rounded answer, it's not an exact answer. This is an exact answer. But I'll be clear on the, in the directions if I want an exact answer or if I, you can do a rounded decimal answer. It'll say which one to do. All right, number six. Now let's get this x squared thing by itself again. Get that thing isolated. So subtract 10, subtract 10. We get x squared equals negative 4. Take the square root of both sides. x equals plus or minus, because we always do plus or minus when we take the square roots. That's when we throw it in there. Plus or minus negative 4. So x equals. Uh-oh, what's going on? You can't take the square root of a negative number. So our answer here is we're going to say no real solutions. 
no real solutions. So this word real here is, uh, it's actually, I'm gonna drop that off on the rest of our notes and on our, uh, on our solutions. You're gonna see me just say no solution instead of no real solutions or no real solution. Uh, it's it's the same thing. You haven't dealt with anything except real numbers so far. I know you're like, what in the heck's not a real number? An imaginary number. When you get into Algebra 2, okay, I don't want to confuse you too much. So if you get confused easily in math class, stop listening for a second because I'm going to scare you. But if you have, uh, for those of you who know what I'm talking about, watch this. It's really easy. You're going to, the square root of 4, so we go plus or minus, square root of 4 is 2. And the square root of a negative number is imaginary. So this is actually the answer, plus or minus 2i, but we're not doing that today, okay? Don't worry. We are not doing that until you get to Algebra 2, so no stress. We're just going to say no solution if you have a square root of a negative number. Okay, the next part of our notes is this thing called quantity squared. When you have two things that we're adding or subtracting, and the grouping of it is being squared, we call it that it's a quantity that is being squared, and so it just kind of helps us refer to a grouping. What you have to do in this case is get whatever's being squared by itself. Well, and for number seven, this problem, it is by itself. So what I'm going to do is just right away, I'm just taking the square root of both sides. When I take the square root, it cancels this squared right here. That thing just goes away. So all I have left is x plus one equals, and when you introduce a square root, you have to say plus or minus four. So this is a little weird now because we have been writing all our answers with just plus or minus, but in this instance, we're going to subtract one from both sides. But you're subtracting one to a four and to a negative four. So what we need to do in this case, we need to write out both little equations. And I know some of you are like, I don't need to do that, Mr. Bean. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Stop being so lazy because Nine out of 10 of my students are gonna do this wrong when you're being lazy like this. So write out both. You have x plus one equals four or x plus one equals negative four. Oops. So now I subtract one from both sides. I get x equals three. Or my other answer is I subtract one from both sides. I get x equals negative five. There's my answers. Three or negative five. All right, let's try this one. So again, we are going to take the square root once you have this thing isolated. So once that, whatever's being squared is all by itself. So the first thing is to subtract the seven. Then we get x minus three quantity squared equals 25. All right, now I'm going to introduce that square root thing. I'm going to do the square root of both sides and then I get that the squared goes away, so I just have x minus three equals plus or minus five. This is where I need to write two separate equations. So x minus three equals five, or x minus three equals negative five. Add three to both sides, I get x equals eight, or add three to both sides, I get x equals negative five plus three is negative two. Whoops, I went right through my or. Okay, eight or negative two. What is that? Negative two. Sorry. Okay, for number nine, I'm going to have you pause. You're going to try this one all on your own, and we'll have the answer appear in just a minute, but let me give you one hint. Remember, you are trying to isolate this quantity squared. So you got this five in front that you have to get rid of before you can take the square root. Okay, give this one a shot, and I'll have the answer pop up here in just a minute. Your answer for number nine should have been negative six and negative 10. So you can see my steps here. You just had to divide by five before you took the square root. Uh, pause there and rewrite that down if you didn't get the right answer, just to make sure you're doing it. And if you're not sure what's going on, that's a good one to ask your teacher for help on. Okay, number 10. I want to do decimal approximation for this one. So I want our final answer to end up getting a decimal. So let's... Uh, Let's see how we're going to do this. First off, we've got to get this thing by itself. So isolating that, I would have to add 6 to both sides. Boom, boom. And then we get 4 quantity x plus 5 squared. So I've got my quantity squared there. Equals 32. 
Divide both sides by 4, I get my quantity of x plus 5 squared. Quantity squared equals 32 divided by 4 is a, what is that? 8, yeah, 8, I knew that. And then I'm going to take the square root of both sides. So when I take that square root right there, I'm going to introduce it. I'll have my plus or minus. So x plus 5 equals a positive square root of 8. Or here's my other equation, x plus 5. 5 equals a negative square root of 8. All right, so yes, I could simplify this. So I'm going to have x equals, subtract the 5, I get negative 5 plus square root of 8. Or x equals negative 5 minus square root of 8. That's a minus right there. So the reason I wrote all this out and that I didn't simplify the radical is because I said at the beginning my instructions were that we're going to find a decimal for this one. We're going to go to the hundreds place, two decimal places. And I wanted to write this whole thing out so now it's much easier. When we plug in the calculator, we can just type it right exactly like that. So get this back up on the screen. Whoa, not that big. Okay, negative 5 plus uh, square root of 8, enter. So negative 2.17, and then the other one was negative 5 minus the square root of 8. Let's drag that over to the screen. So now I can say that x is approximately negative 2.17, or x is approximately negative 7.8. Let's round up to 3. Boom, there it is. And then if you graphed this thing, if we set it equal to 0 and graphed it, we could also find that. Okay, so we're going to show you several different strategies in, for the rest of this unit. The next lesson and the lesson after that will show you some different ways of solving these. You just want to be proficient with all of them because sometimes there are certain situations where it's much easier. All right, this is Mr. Bean signing off. Rock that master check, and I'll see you back in the next lesson.